open clean water and your company doesn't have enough money to go so many places and you close down because it cannot pay your rent you have to pay your personal rent you I believe that's very selfish one of the, some of the words that inspired me the most was saying by another shop and you know see back in the shop say you start your work you know because it's your work this is program start because they love programming it's like I'm gonna create something cool so they go and they create this cool thing that allows farmers to pay from one point to another without having but then when society hears about it, then society begins to demand that you succeed. Then we'll start coming to you but we need your you know. And they're not telling you you're offering new money search. They're like, we need your product. We need to figure out what we do. You begin it as your passion. And then society begins to demand that you succeed. There's no other alternative. You must succeed because you put yourself on your shoulders. It began as a problem for us and we're like, oh, let's help these guys. What? What? You saw that thing is broken? Okay, let's help you fix it. If society started demanding, you have to come and fix our solar systems. So we had to change our business. We had to play to the tune of you know, society and figure out how do we do it sustainably. The day you close what you've started is the day you've betrayed a billion lives. We need to keep that in mind. So if you want that, if you want a billion people crying, you know, over the fact that, you know, you just couldn't do a simple thing and bring this world into our community. You know? So stick with it. Stay, stay in the game in whatever fashion. The company that that makes sticky notes. Yeah. You know how you began? You began by making technology. Like designing technology. Right? So electrical. No, no, no. Electrical is like, you know, trying out with you know, phones, fridges, TV, you know. Their problem was, you just don't know how to keep this idea around. They pop and disappear. Alright? So inside, okay, let's create some papers that, you know, yeah. you can stick with. Huh? That's how they stick note. And then they left technology. They started making stick notes, which you have around the world. Samsung. Everyone knows Samsung. Mm. Yeah. Do you know the first thing Samsung did? Mm. No. Samsung actually started as a sugar company. Mm. Sugar. Sugar. Ah. Sugar. Sugar. I thought you were going to say stole apples. <laughs> <laughs> it started as a sugar company. <laughs> Most of the companies that you see today, bar Microsoft, you know, a couple of them, but most of them started doing something And then they stumbled across this, like, what? This is an issue? Remember, every problem is an opportunity. There is no, no matter how terrible it is, how if you could figure out a way of you know, getting rid of firearms with all the war that's going on. If you came up with this brilliant technology that somehow, you know, would make guns and bombs useless, how many peace organizations do you think would buy? Everyone would be falling over, you know. But well, some people would want to shoot you to kill because you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem. People are dying by the drop. <laughs> But if someone could come, someone would be compassionate. But for you to change a problem into an opportunity, you have to have the most compassion there is. Trust me, it's not about being greedy. You know, like, wow, this is a big problem. I can, you know, create a phone. You know, and these guys faced huge problems. But instead of quitting and saying, that doesn't work, they sat down and thought. They're like, a billion people are facing this problem. I need to, and they devoted their lives. Mm. Yes, those turned into businesses. We were moved away like from sugar, they're like, okay, sugar is, you know, but, and then they started making phones. So today you may start you know, doing one thing, but you must figure out how to stay in the game. If you started a water program and you end up having to sell charcoal on the side, for God's sake, sell charcoal. But stay in the game. Sell charcoal, make the money to fund 
we pivot in our business to provide services, but we still go out and pitch for big projects because we don't have funding for it. Then we get that money and invest it. Right? You have to have the most compassion. You know, you know what I mean by compassion? Seeing something and sitting down and thinking about other people other than yourself. Yes, your suffering is the fact that you cannot make enough money. But your, your heart is with other people who are facing this problem. And society is depending on you to figure it out. So stay with the kids. If at the end of the day you can't even afford rent, you don't have kids. Go and knock on your brother's door and say, you there, I've been kicked out. We <laughs> fall on this couch and pick up myself. And that's what, one of the things that influenced my decision the most. <coughs> to leave Ashoka. Ashoka is like an amazing, amazing organization. But I was like, you know what, I don't have kids. If things go south, I can go and, you know, just tell someone, let me lie on your couch, let me lie on your carpet. And you have a lot of people, right? So as a person, it's easier for you to become so passionate about what you do. But you need to start early. The biggest regret that I have seen and have read so many profiles of very successful business, businessmen, I mean, I'm talking about Bill Gates, you know, like really, really successful business. The one thing they continuously say when they ask them, what's your biggest regret? Is what? I wish I started. It's the one constant thing. Like, I wish I started. I, I wish I had figured this out. I, so the sooner you jump in, the better. Now society is demanding. Now Ashok has recognized. It's like, eh, these guys are doing good. You think they're always in their time? They've now recognized and the pressure is on you now. You can either decide to disappoint him and we find you on the street. <laughs> and then you find one of your, your friends, eh? It's like, you know what, by the way, at this point, eh, we are building our 20th borehole in the community. And we are vending water and we are turning over, you know, 200 million shillings a month. <laughs> and I was with that guy, yeah, I started telling those guys. Those seven you know. class. <laughs> By the way, I was with that guy in the Ashoka thing, you know. Mm -hmm. That guy stuck with it. And now he's here, you know. <laughs> they used to work, he was <laughs> You know. And, and you know, you're not even really talking about that he's making a lot of money. You're talking about the fact that, you know, he's done so much. Right? He's done so much in the community and you would have done that much. But yeah. You, know, you, you have your own way of surviving and everything, but stick with it. When you guys, all of you together, achieve what you set out to achieve, I, can, I cannot emphasize, I haven't even achieved half of what I want. But when I meet my fellow guys that we started out with, we sit down and have coffee and we laugh about the day when we couldn't find a place to sleep. We just laugh about it. You know, like, do it. You cannot imagine the things I've done. I have sold. I'm talking about the fancy styrofoam cup. Sales. Yes. Sales are very Number it. Uganda versus Nigeria. You guys must have been toddlers or something. Mm -hmm. We decided to get it. Guys are going to get thirsty. Let's go and sell juice. So we took our styrofoam cups, you know, like those, you know. Come out to the stadium, you, know, you have your store, the classic American, you know, lemonade stand idea. <laughs> Was that your Ashoka story? <laughs> Ashoka before they hire us, they're like, what was your like, what is that, uh, that, moment. that story, that moment, right? Everyone talks about their about lemonade the, the stand. Lemonade this is the African version. <laughs> so, I mean, we were like, I mean, guys get thirsty, right? They're out in the blazing sun, our stadiums don't have like, those covering. You're out in the sun, brutal. So the guys are going to get thirsty. I mean, but we did know that the guys who actually go to watch this football game, you think? Middle class guys go to watch football games. That's like 0.1% of people in the stadium. Most of the guys are the guys who buy, you know the guys who buy water for 100 million. Those are the guys who, buy, who spend 5,000 shillings for water. Believe it or not. So we are there with our fancy cups, no one. Because of course you have to cost the cup. You know, and you're telling people, what? Juice? What the, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and the guy next, next to you is selling water in. Okay. Like, you know what? <laughs> Change of strategy. <laughs> Both the guys. Me. Graduate, we did this stuff. And still, it didn't work out. We came back a second time. This time it was water, because we saw water. But like mineral water, that time mineral water had come down to 
500 shillings. So we're like, so our brilliant idea was, let's talk to the management of the stadium and get exclusive rights. The only sellers. You know, the sellers are good, right? Monopoly. It's because of the <laughs> days when I was in like, <laughs> cutthroat business, I need to make money. <laughs> <laughs> and so this guy's like, yeah. Mm. And we're, not talk we're talking to, you know, Fufa. We're talking, I mean, we're talking like the guys who make decisions. So the guys are like, yeah. All you have to do is pay this amount of money, and then we're like, fine. I paid the money, went, spent our money, bought cartons and cartons of water. In fact, we got, the, the deal went through very late. Went around this time when tomorrow is the game. Right? So now we have to find the water. You know, no one is selling us water. We're looking for, eventually we, you know, we found the water. And then they are like, we are going to deliver the water for you. But all they did was with a very good friend of mine. It's called Terence. They delivered the water and put it in Nambol. I remember it to Nambol. Yeah. Before you start going up those stairs, they put it in. Yeah. I think there were 100 boxes of water. It is 7 p.m. There's no one in the stadium. It's me and my boy. We can't leave the water there. <laughs> we carried that water. 100 boxes. We brought our girlfriends. They helped. <laughs> but trust me, carrying 100 boxes of water up those Nambol steps. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we are sweating, we look like... <laughs> and guess what? We still fail. Why? Because we got started sneaking water in. The water for 100 to 200 shillings. So, still here. It's that curiosity, that, you know, that thing is like... I can't explain, I can't tell you that go and study it. It's the stuff they don't teach you in school, right? I can't tell you, you know, go and study. I can't even teach you that curiosity. I talk to people who have that curiosity, who have found that calling, that, that, that thing that just doesn't make you sleep well. And you're like, but, eh, last time, eh, those guys played us. And let's go back, you know. If you ever lose that curiosity, if you ever lose it, then, the difference between living and existing. This cup is existing. It's not living. Never move. Never ever ever move. And this until someone does what? Living is having problems to solve. Mm -hmm. You can either, you know, I hate I I'll confess, I hate video games. Because every time and I tell my sister. If you ever bring a man who plays video games, I will never accept. <laughs> <laughs> because for me, it's existing. You know, if you're like, if you're not being constructive, right? But you know, you're sitting there like, okay, you need to pay my rent, but I don't have enough money in the business. So what do I do? I need someone like that who's moving point. I might, I meet you in the street. You're like, yeah, I can't talk too much because mm -hmm. you know, I have to meet my landlord. I have, I'm two six, but I don't have the money. So I'm not. That is a man who's chasing something. Always chasing. I always tell people there are two, two of the biggest, sin, the second biggest sin below not believing in God. I mean, just but I'm, I'm not a, I'm not gonna bomb anyone. I'm not a fanatic, but I believe there's a, the second biggest sin is not having, not having a plan. Just waking up in the morning and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone asks you and you're like, you're fake. That's the second biggest sin I never had. So have a video. You wake up in the morning and chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it, chase it. You will find it. Aim for the, they say aim for the stars and follow the moon or the other way around. I don't aim for the stars and follow the moon. Good luck. <laughs> 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 <laughs>